When you first think about Paris, France, you may think about a city of romance, a city of lights, or perhaps a city of gastronomy. As a couple who travels the world to eat good food, we couldn't miss out on the chance to taste some of the most famous street foods and dishes in the French cuisine. We're gonna be running around all of Paris today, and I am so excited, but I'm also a little bit nervous because the French cuisine is rather complex, and making a food tour about it is definitely very daunting, but I'm gonna do my best, I'm gonna have fun with it, and we're gonna go and eat our way around the city of Paris. So with that, let's get right into the video. We've just found ourselves a nice little spot next to the Seine River. And of course, we had to start our day with some baked goods because you can't come to France and miss out on their pastries. We decided to go over to a boulangerie, which is a bakery. And apparently there are over 30,000 boulangeries across the country of France, which kind of shows how much they love their freshly baked goods. And another thing, if you are looking for things that are baked right on premise, nice and fresh for you to pick up, you've got to go to somewhere that says boulangerie because that will ensure it. All right, let's start off strong with one of the most iconic French foods out there, the French baguette, also known as the national bread of France. Very cool. This is basically a very long and thin bread. It's nice and chewy on the inside and crispy and golden on the outside, exactly what you would want in a good bread. And this is actually quite new to the France's like culinary history. It didn't become popular until the 1920s, so quite modern, as you could say. Oh yeah. So growing up in the US, I am so used to going to a supermarket in order to buy my bread, and that bread is supposed to last for, you know, a week or two at least. But here in France, a lot of the locals, they'll go to their boulangeries every other day to pick up fresh bread for their meals. And I think it's really remarkable and it's something that I really admire about the French culture, I suppose. They care about the quality of their food. And I think in the US, things have become so systemized. You want it to be convenient, easy, and that is why we have the bread that we have today. In this bag, I've got two more iconic French goodies. So the first thing, probably already know, it is the croissant. <laughs> and this is a crescent-shaped pastry. It's so buttery, so flaky, and it will literally melt in your mouth. And getting one here in France, fresh, it's in uncomparable, incomparable. Nothing can compare to it. <laughs> wow, I'm making a huge mess. So this right here, it's the golden heaven. I love the insides of breads and this, it's filled with butter. So it just makes it so much better. Oh, so good. And then the last thing this morning, this is pain au chocolat, which is basically bread with chocolate. But more specifically, it's croissant bread with chocolate. So it just makes it even better. Buttery, but also chocolatey. Ah, one of my favorite things to start the day with. For those of you who don't know, this is our second time here in France because in 2019, we had the opportunity to study abroad here for two months, which was so, so fun. But we actually came to the Notre Dame on the day that it burned down, which was um, very sad to see because everyone was crowded around it. There were like firefighters. It was just a very crazy time to visit and to witness history um, in some sort of a way. But today we are back and it is obviously not burning, but you can't go inside because they're still fixing it up, reconstructing it so that it's safe for people to enter again. All right, we have made it to lunch, and you can't really tell what these are based off of how they plated them, but this is escargot. I feel like everyone knows what escargot is, but whether they want to try it or not, that's kind of up in the air. But if you don't know what it is, escargot is a common delicacy of snails here in France, and the French are amongst the biggest snail eaters in the entire world, followed by the Portuguese. And so these little fellas are also very high in protein, kind of like the rainforest grows we had over in the Amazon rainforest. They have provided us with these cute little forks to pick up the, the little guys. Mmm, it's definitely very, very savory. So many herbs and spices up in there and a lot of oil as well. Slides right down. <laughs> Sounds unappetizing, but it really does. So based on Claire's response, I'm going to try it with the bread. Maybe it won't slide down too quick. Mmm. It's like a warm, 
snail spread on the bread. Next up, we have the French onion soup, and this is an onion in meat broth that's topped with a crunchy piece of bread and also some grated cheese. And back in the seventh grade, we actually had a potluck in my French class, and my mom made a French onion soup of her take, and it was so, so good. I've been dying to try it here in France. I missed out on it last time, so now is my chance. <laughs> Ooh. I love that you have that sweetness from the onion, but it's still just so savory in that cheese my favorite part obviously and then the bread makes it all the more cozy we are currently falling asleep at the table we are so jet lagged and like the food just makes you want to go straight to sleep like it's perfectly temperate outside oh, i just want to close my eyes for a second but i know i'm just gonna pass out so i can't small potatoes carrots ham mushroom with a wine sauce wow oh, this is the Boeuf Bourguillon, probably butchering the name of it. But this is a beef stew that originated over in Burgundy and it dates back all the way to at least the Middle Ages when it was used as a way to tenderize cheap pieces of meat. So it made cheap meat taste really good and nowadays it's still making meat taste fantastic. This is the dish that was in the Julia Child movie. I believe it's called Julie and Julia. And this is the one that she was trying to conquer in the end and apparently one of the hardest ones to make oh it's so fragrant oh it's still too hot I was already feeling sleepy this is gonna like put me straight to bed <laughs> next up we have a steak tartare and as you can see it is raw beef which I have never eaten raw beef before and apparently the quality of the meat here is just so good that you can eat it raw which I really admire and I think that's pretty cool so for the first time ever, I'm going to try some raw ground beef. The server did bring over two sauces because he says this is an acquired taste. So if I don't like it how it is, I can add some Worcester sauce or some Tabasco. But I'm going to try it on its own first so that I can get the full experience, I guess. <laughs> Do you want to try it together, Chad? It's okay, you go first. Oh, Chad's nervous. <laughs> Cheers to myself. Oh, no biggie, Chad. It tastes like raw tuna or something. I'm so used to eating raw fish because I grew up eating like sashimi. So this is like no big deal for me. <laughs> I think it actually tastes pretty good, even without the sauces. But let me try it with the sauce now. Ooh, yeah, with the sauces, obviously. Just gives it more flavor, a little bit of spice, a um, little bit of kick. All right, first time having raw beef. It's definitely a mental thing, but it's extremely savory. I like the sauce. Did you put the sauce on it? I put a little bit, yeah. Yeah, that, that helps me out. I like it. The, the texture is just very interesting. It, it is like a tuna, I guess, but even like slimier. Knowing me, you know I'll always say yes to dessert. So today we have the creme brulee, and this is a delicate custard that's covered with a sheet of burnt sugar. And where this dish originates from is actually still quite a mystery. It could have come from France, but some others say it also could have come from New York, or it could be even a copycat of the crema catalana, which is something that we had over in Madrid, Spain, in a 300-year-old restaurant. So even though we don't know where it originated from, we do know it's quite delicious, and that is why we've got it today. This is so good. Yeah. All right. <laughs> we are so jet lagged the entire walk here. We were basically sleepwalking, but we've made it to our next stop on our food tour. Yeah, just gotta keep eating, powering <laughs> through. We are in front of a shop that sells these very famous ham and butter sandwiches. So I'm gonna go and use my broken French and try to order us some. Keep the food tour going. <laughs> Classic and traditional, if this one. Okay. The most expensive one. Oh, I see. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, did, you, you said two qualities. Yeah. yeah the yeah. best quality. Sure. Sure. Okay. So the best of the best. Okay, let's do the best. The best yeah. of the best. <laughs> there you go. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Thank you. We just bought two items that were far more expensive than what we thought it would be, but 
Hopefully it'll taste really good. We're bringing it over to the Eiffel Tower so that we can enjoy sunset over there. And even see those, what is it, the sparkling lights that yeah. happen every hour? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Chad figured out the bus system. So we're taking public transportation, save our legs some, some extra work. Yes. So I'm very excited. We have made it to the Eiffel Tower. Someone has already come up to us to try to sell us some stuff and we have declined. But maybe later once I have energy from the food we're about to eat, I'll go bargain us some good champagne. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Let me show you the very pricey items we had to spend our money on for this food tour. So this is the first thing. This is Jabon Beurre. And we went into the store asking the owner to give us their most classic, traditional sandwich. And of course, it turned out to be the most expensive one in there. The yeah. best quality. Sure. Sure. Okay. So the best of the best. It costs just under 20 euro, which is very, very pricey for a sandwich that's only made of three ingredients, ham, bread, and butter. But let's give it a try. We chose the one with some cured ham, so maybe that will make up for the price tag. It has been sitting for a little bit, so it's a little bit hard. <laughs> In the US, they're always smacking on the mayonnaise, but I guess here they smack on the butter. And it does taste pretty good. Like three ingredients is actually not too bad. Whether it's worth the 20 euro, I do need to question that. I would probably pay maybe like 15 or less. <laughs> I'd say five or less. Five yeah, or I haven't less, even tried wow. it yet. Okay. I should try it. Okay, I can taste the quality increase for sure. I think you did put cheese on it. I can oh. see it. Really good cheese. Oh Four my goodness. Four ingredients. <laughs> Yeah, I'd pay over 10 euros for the sandwich again. Our next pricey treat for the evening is the macaron. And according to the box, um, this place called La Dore has been around since 1862. So quite some time. They must have perfected it by now, I'm assuming. Beautiful packaging. This just feels very fancy. <laughs> okay. Let's see what we've chosen. I got a whole rainbow of color. Ooh. Oh, so cute! That is gonna make Claire smile. <laughs> if you don't know what a macaron is, it is a meringue-based confection that looks like a little cookie sandwich. Very, very cute. And the one I'm holding is lemon. We also got pistachio, Marie Antoinette tea, almond, apricot, and coffee. So a lot of different flavors. I'm gonna try lemon. One of my favorite desserts of all time. I don't know why. I think it's just because I never really got to eat them as a kid. So I thought they were the most fascinating things once I was a teenager and got to try it for the first time. This is the last one. I got an apricot one just because we recently moved into the apricot house. So it's like a little celebration. <laughs> and we've already tried all the other five. They've been very, very fragrant. And the quality is there. I understand why these are so expensive. Just look at those three beautiful layers. <laughs> you had to see that coming. <laughs> I did not see that coming. <laughs> I've done I was that like, so why is she smiling so much? <laughs> I know. All right, what do you think? Fruity, delightful. <laughs> All right, one bite for you, one bite for me. You go ahead. <laughs> I don't trust you for a second. <laughs> Give me that. We've moved up closer to the Eiffel Tower in about five minutes or so. It's gonna start to sparkle. I'm very excited. So if you didn't know, at every single hour, um, I think from 10 p.m. and on, it sparkles for five minutes, but five minutes only. So you have to like take in the magic during that time. So it's 10.05. We think that the light show should have started five minutes ago. People are starting to whistle very loudly, demanding that the Eiffel Tower just lights up. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm assuming that it's gonna light up soon. Yeah, we'll see. Otherwise, it'll be at 11. It's because the sun sets so late here. Like, mm -hmm. at 10 o'clock is when it sets. Yeah. Why are you trying to whistle? <laughs> wow, people can really whistle here. We've decided that while we wait for the lights to come on, we're gonna go and get some crepes because that's on my list. And hopefully we can break some cash so that we can bargain for some champagne. Um, because all we have are 20s right now and I'm not paying that much.
our plan worked perfectly. Not only do we have a hot steaming crepe, we also have a five and a 10 now because this costs five euro. The last time we were on the island of Crete in Greece, we had one of their crepes and we were like, this is the best one in the world. Funky. <laughs> yeah, funky. So let's try one in Paris. Just as good as Funky's, Chad. No way, really? Yeah. <laughs> So some history that I just read about. These lights were added in 1999, right before the turn of the century, and apparently they used a lot of energy. So recently, they have changed them to energy efficient bulbs. Well, we struck a deal. They were coming over to us and saying that they would give us um, champagne for 35 euro or wine for 20. And I told them we only had five. And so we ended up bringing down the deal to seven euro for a bottle of rosé. And honestly, we only put five euro of our own money into it because we found two euro on the ground. But with that, we're going to end the food tour video here. Thank you so much for joining us as we ate our way through Paris. Uh, we're gonna be in France for another little while. So if you'd like to join us in the country and also along our 50 country goal, hit subscribe. And thank you so much to everyone who's supporting us on Patreon. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without you all. With that, we'll catch you guys in Southern France. They really want your baguette. I know, they're like five birds around me, all making noise. Shoo, shoo. <laughs> oh Let me fill my food time. Oh, these must be the snails. Yeah. Oh, they're inside little cups. That's hot with some crusty bread. Crusty, <laughs> crunchy, <laughs> not crusty. <laughs> Sorry, one second. What should I do?